a few months ago, NVIDIA unleashed the RTX 4090, its newest flagship card that delivered 4K gaming at high frame rates, but also had a high price tag. Fast forward to today, and NVIDIA is unleashing the RTX 4080, a cut down version of the 4090 that promises to do most of what the 4090 can do for less money. But does the NVIDIA RTX 4080 have it where it counts and have enough to capture what gamers are looking for? And do any of the partner cards bring more to the table or should you just stick with the Founders Edition? Starting off with Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and we can see that the RTX 4080 slots right between the RTX 4090 and the RX 6950 XT, at least when looking at 4K performance. In fact, it actually lands pretty much exactly in between the two, with it being 25% faster than the 6950 XT, and the 4090 being 23% faster than the 4080. That does put the 4080 in a little bit of a no man's land of performance categories, but it is at least about 64% faster than the outgoing RTX 3080. Moving over into Battlefield 5, and the RTX 4080 is now a little more in line with the competition, slotting in 10% faster than the RTX 3090 Ti. This does mean the RTX 4090 was still 20% faster than the RTX 4080, and the gen over gen growth for the RTX 3080 to 4080 was only 36%. Taking a look at Cyberpunk 2077, and at 4K, the RTX 4080 is at 56.1 FPS, so it's just shy of a 60 FPS experience. The RTX 4090 pulls off its biggest lead of 71.2, meaning 27% faster, the 3090 Ti being 16% slower, and the gen over gen growth from the RTX 3080 being 57%. And when you add in ray tracing, everything goes down, and now the RTX 4080 is only averaging 29 FPS. While this does mean that the RTX 4080's lead over the RTX 3090 Ti has increased to 17%, and its lead over the RTX 3080 has increased to 67%, it's now a whopping 44% slower than the RTX 4090. Elden Ring at 4K runs very well on the RTX 4080. NVIDIA's newest card manages 89 FPS, which is 15% better than the RTX 3090 Ti, and 45% faster than the outgoing 3080. The RTX 4090 is again still in a league of its own with 25% more performance, but considering that it also costs roughly 30, 33% more, that is still a pretty good showing for the RTX 4080. Moving over to Far Cry 6, and we see that the race is a lot tighter here than in most other games. The RTX 4080 is good for 100 FPS, which is 12% faster than the 3090 Ti, and only 39% faster than the outgoing 3080. But what's probably more impressive is the RTX 4090 at 114 FPS is only 13% faster than its little brother, the RTX 4080. Far Cry 6 with ray tracing has always favored the red team a bit, so we do see a bit of a shakeup here with the charts. The RX 6950 XT has supplanted the RTX 3090 Ti and is now only 9% slower than the RTX 4080. The RTX 4090's lead has decreased to 9%, and the gen over gen comparison of the RTX 4080 versus the 3080 has remained basically the same at 38%. Resident Evil Village is the latest game in Capcom's horror genre, and it is kind of a horror show here for the RTX 4080. While it does have a massive lead of 60% over the RTX 3080, and a decent lead of 15% over the RTX 3090 Ti, it is 47% slower than the RTX 4090. Now 159 FPS is nothing to scoff at, and being the second fastest card in all these charts is a pretty good thing. It's not a very good look when the RTX 4090 is winning and bang for a buck. Luckily, performance numbers like these are the anomaly, and the RTX 4080 is, in fact, a much better deal than the RTX 4090. In fact, it's a better deal than the RTX 3090 Ti and the RTX 3080 Ti. 
and basically the same as the RTX 3090. It does lose a little bit of its value proposition compared to the RTX 3080, but seeing as that card is in a much different performance bracket, most people probably wouldn't be cross shopping the two of them. Unlucky for NVIDIA, the RX 6950 XT and the RX 6900 are both at pretty good price points right now and are a much better value for dollar than the RTX 4080. And that's before any potential price decreases due to the RX 79000 release, which is expected to be faster with rasterizing, but slower on ray tracing, but at a lower price, so there is a trade-off. You also get access to DLSS 3, but FSR 3.0 is expected in 2023. That being said, the, looking at the power consumption of the RTX 4080 while gaming, and it is much better than all of the competition. At 304 watts, it compares very well to all of its contemporary cards and uses less energy than even the RTX 3080, of which it's much faster. And in terms of watts per frame, the RTX 4080 is currently uncontested. And that's not a bad place to be in considering this is the second fastest card you can currently buy. The RTX 4090 does have a 25% lead in performance, but at the MSRP at least, it does command a 33% markup, so there could be some relative value here in the RTX 4080. And while it may not be a big upgrade for people who are already rocking an RTX 3090 Ti, it is a good upgrade path for people who are using an RTX 3080 or below. And quickly looking at partner cards, you can see that the RTX 4080 FE, the vanilla version, is pretty much in good company with even the fastest ASUS RTX 4080 Strix OC, which is 3% faster than the base model. This is pretty good news since it means that any RTX 4080 is going to compare pretty favorably to each other and really let you compare them each on price. For a full review on each of these cards, check out techpowerup.com.